What's up? What's up, everybody? Oh, I forgot to do that. Hey, swing. Welcome, everybody. We'll give it a second. I know I posted the uh, invitation a little late. It's a pleasure. I'm covering for Joe. I know Joe you normally does these on Sundays, but um, uh, he just mentioned he couldn't make it. So I figure I'd stop by. And, and cover for him. We'll give it just a little bit more. I know it just turned, I think it was 8 p.m. EST, 5 p.m. Mountain, 6. Hey, Raymond. And if you guys want, um, since there's very few of you, go ahead and, and is there specific tickers you guys want me to chart out? Um, is there stuff that you guys are looking at in particular? We can... Um, we can go over those just so I can give you guys perspectives on, on what I'm seeing. Obviously a lot, and I, I will caveat, I think a lot of stuff is, what's the right word? It's messy right now just because of the news that popped off on Thursday. But besides that, if we still look at things from, uh, from a long-term perspective, you can still have a lot of plays. And I think that the cool thing, and I actually saved it on Spine, we'll check out Spine a bit. Um, Mara, AMD, Apple, Tesla. I got burnt on some puts this week and cut them one day before the fake. Yeah, man, news. News is like that's why when it, whenever I do my charting lectures, whenever I do my charting lectures, I always like I literally say, we can learn all of this. We can we know how important support and resistance is. We know how important uh trend lines are but like news like news can just make all of that shit like just go down the drain like none of that matters when news comes you know so whether it's fake news or real news right it, it works both ways give it one more minute and we'll get started okay so we got mara amd has la baba put Volume is huge. Looking for a swing. Baba is in, who? There was another person um, that was looking at Baba recently. I don't know if it was Toasty. I think Rev was looking at, ba at Baba. I know Tilio was looking at Baba as well. But then with the issue with like Baba and stuff like that and, and tickers from China is you're susceptible to news. So... Alrighty, guys, we'll get started. I, I know there's very few. Uh, Archon didn't announce that there was going to be an event today or that there's going to be a um, a session today. So, you know, if people come and go as we please, we're going to be doing some charting today. And I asked for you guys to post some stuff. Briefly, though, before we get started on the charting, I did want to just quickly go over. Uh, we're not going to go too deep into earnings, but essentially earnings is starting right? So we're, we're getting back into earnings. The ones that we're really going to be paying attention to is going to be Delta on Wednesday. And then on Friday, if you realize, there's going to be a lot of financials reporting. So kind of keep that in mind. We have City, BlackRock, Wells Fargo, and JP Morgan. We also have a week full of news, guys. So on Wednesday, we have CPI. We have some Fed speakers talking, 10-year uh, note auction, federal budget balance, FOMC minutes, so keep that in mind as we go through the charting. Keep this in mind as we go through the week. That is going to be a pretty eventful week just due to data in general. Um, with airlines, so like I said, we're just going to talk on these briefly. With airlines, the biggest thing, and Tilly and I have been going back and forth on these, is just profitability with airlines it always comes down to a lot with oil prices. So... We've been looking at oil prices. Oil prices are trading lower than normal. So any increase in oil prices will cause a decrease in airlines. You see that. The other thing we're going to be looking for is guidance and kind of seeing how airlines are going to see it for the rest of the year, right? So that's something to pay attention to.
Thursday, we have more news. So CPI Wednesday, then we have PPI on Thursday. Then we have one, two, three, four. We have four Fed, no, five. Five Fed speakers on Thursday, right? And then, so this, we have a 30-year bond auction. Again, Wednesday, Thursday, going to be very, very, I think just going to be critical for how we move forward in the market overall. And then you got big players reporting on Friday. So this Friday pre-market, you're not going to be able to trade these unless you trade into them. Um, this is coming directly from what Telio wrote in his... Um, his email letter that he sends out every week, he posts it. I recommend you guys read that. It's it's very well. And essentially, it comes to all the financials, right? So essentially, banks are uh, can see higher net interest income when interest rates are higher, which is positive. Interest rates come down. So we're just going to have to see, honestly, a lot of this is just going to be based on guidance. And then for city. Um, I, I had this in here just because Telio and I are are actually in some calls. So we're in city calls. Um, I believe he's in the 60s. I'm in the 62.5s for June 12th, if I have the date remote, correct. But yeah, so that's something we're swinging into if, if you guys are curious. All right, let's get started with the charting, guys. Delta. Yeah, Delta is going to be interesting because uh, usually what happens is you'll have finance, then travel or travel, then finance. And then the rest of the big boys start coming down the line. Um, MO is coming back strong. So I'll just go down the list so that way I don't get lost. So we're going to look at PayPal and Google from Rodrigo. Rodrigo, is there a way you've been looking to trade PayPal or are you just kind of doing this because of Nando's Nando's play? Out of curiosity, right? I mean, I already, I already have like a lot of charts here, but we can we can start all over. I just want to know if are we looking at these for short term or we or I can do that as well, right? We can do, look at these on a longer term perspective, then bring them down to short term perspective. If you guys are trying to day trade or if you guys are trying to scalp, right? So we can do both. Uh, funny enough, me, me and Nando have been talking about PayPal a lot. And I, I saw what he was seeing overall because PayPal's just kind of been in this, kind of stuck in this rut for a while. Give me a second. I wish you and Tilio gave swing alert on the China. I so I talked to Tilio about that. Um, and Tilio, what happened? What will happen sometimes is that there's an overload of alerts that happen there's just too many alerts happening at once and there's a lot of people who are new or a lot of people who are greedy and they'll literally just start taking every single alert without knowing like why they're getting into it so because of that like tilio step back i'm busy with work so i have a full-time job and i know some people can do both i i just do spend a lot of time on my job so it's one of the reasons why i don't do it I also, to be completely honest, it can get really mind. What's the right term? I don't. I don't want to say like. It can mess with you mentally. When like you know your play is right, and me and Nando talk about this all the time because a lot of people obviously take his plays. Um, but why do I want to do this? Hmm. I mean, originally I would really like it here. Obviously it broke that trend line already. And I, I actually talked to him about this. Yeah. Stressful. Like there's like there's times where I had plays and I cut them just out of like the safety for the, for the discord. And then it just paid next week. And I was like, I knew it. Like I know my risk tolerance, but like not everyone has the same risk, risk tolerance as me. Right. So that's like that's the issue sometimes and i'm just chatting guys i don't want this to be like a boring charting thing i i want you guys to interact with me so this is essentially what we were looking at originally and i was telling nando when we were speaking um one of the things that i really wanted to do um if we actually take this down to the five minute which is where i was charting most of it we'll get a better view so that 65 level has been very strong. 
and I told him, I was like, we need to close above 65. Um, and this is just more on, on a macro level or a micro level, if you want to call it that. And I told him, it's like, we definitely need a, a, needed to close above this 50 line. I think we're fine. We have more than enough time on this play. What we need to do, though, is we're going to need to reclaim, and we can go back out, right? We're going to need to reclaim that hotter trend line. Obviously, news broke, right? We were there. We were almost there, but we need to reclaim this. So like the 65s, high 66, and then eventually break up and above above 67, right? So I think, one, we have more than enough time to actually do this like realistically. And I think as buyers are going to be stepping in, we do have that possibility to, to break back out, right? So keep an eye on that 65 level. I think it's very crucial for PayPal. But then also this trend line, because I wouldn't be surprised if, again, that level ends up becoming a resistance and we end up getting pulled back down, right? So those are just like the little things that we need to pay attention to. Um, yeah, Raymond, it's it's funny, right? Like sometimes you just need to trust yourself. And that's actually with Nando being here, I've, I've actually kind of got my confidence back. Because a lot of times he's like, just trust the trust your play, trust your chart, trust what you've been doing. Because I think what we forget is like, especially in the swing for swinging markets, we want gains like the next day or the moment. And I'm, I remember um Started 1K posts this a lot, and I really like it. There was he does his weekly motivation on on I think it's on Mondays, and there was one thing. It's like a lot of traders think that the moment they enter a trade, that the charts should reverse just because they're in. And if you think that way, it's it's just a really really bad mindset to go into trading, versus like understanding that you're still susceptible to the market, right? We're not any better just because we are charting certain things, right? I have a PayPal December expiry looking for at least 70 in the next few weeks to exit around 50, 58. So I'll be quick to 70 soon. Um, are you in shares? You added at 58, you added 58. I don't understand what you're saying, Swing. Sorry. But yeah, I, I, PayPal's fine, guys. I, I don't see this going crazy. Obviously, with Wednesday and Thursday being news heavy, though, those are things we're going to have to take into consideration. We can do all the charting we want today. None of that shit's going to matter if like one of the Fed guys or PPI or, or CPI just comes in hotter than, than the market wants it to and it pulls it back down, right? So, oh, before we get into Google, I want to show you guys something. It's leaps added if it that's really good, man. If you have leaps, I think PayPal is at a good spot. Yeah, I, I definitely see 70 potentially incoming. I think that's actually Nando's uh that's one of Nando's profit targets. Even just this, this high, if you noticed. So if we do that, like this top and that top. So like this is how certain traders will set their profit targets. The, it got rejected there once. So like, let's say we pop past the 66, we go to 67. What are the chances we're going to break past 68 this time? Well, we don't know, but that's definitely either a good spot to trim or it's going to be a good spot to just take your profits, right? doesn't mean uh, that we can't scale up, but it's definitely just something to take into consideration. But yeah, I wanted to show you guys SPY. And the reason I, I know we're going to get to Google because I, I know that was supposed to be next. But I, what I love about, obviously, we've been in an uptrend for a really, really long time. And look how beautifully it gets respected, right? But here's the thing. This is why I love trend lines and support and resistance in general. I didn't touch these. I didn't move these. Obviously, we had our news, right? We 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 jumped down from uh, 520, literally 524 all the way down to five, 513, let's say. Look at where it peaked at, though. We peaked at 520, exactly 520 being a psychological number, but it like literally touched the trend line. And as you guys know, and anyone who's been charting for a while now understands that support, if gets breached, if we go below support, it then becomes a resistance, right? 
So now spy, now the game for spy is can we reclaim this? Can we reclaim this? Whatever level that is, right? Personally, that definitely would be that 520 level, just psychological number. But it just shows how cool, right? If you chart right, if you trust your plays, it will work out. And I think this is proof of it. So, all right. My Tesla puts went from 111 to 0.45, then back to 190. Well, that that's definitely push rate. Right? Like we'd have, I'd have to see like what when you got in, how long contracts you had, your strike. You know, we'd have to take all of that into consideration to be like, yo, you should have held that or you shouldn't have held that, right? So, this Google is one that I um I'm a little upset about. So I actually was talking to B5 about this and we I wanted to get in around like the 130 mark, clearly pivoted very, very hard. Not only that, but it pivoted at the time of the 200 EMA, um, or the SMA, pardon me. And essentially the 200 is just one. This is one I shout out to Toasty about for uh, introducing me to it and really just teaching me. Um, but it's just a great indicator for long-term uh, swings that I always this and this pop right here what you guys see this was news uh, when Apple announced that it was potentially going to be using Google's uh, Gemini AI um, in their iPhones right so that's why you got that pop and then you also have you'll actually see that same exact pop on Apple if I believe yeah Apple got that pop as well so uh, let's chart this out for you guys uh, and I believe this was Raymond as well Raymond how were you or swing? Was this was it swing or who wanted to see? Um, someone wanted to see this. Sorry, I just want to make sure. I want I want to understand how you guys are, Rodrigo. How how are you planning to trade Google? What ideas did you have? I don't want to just chart it and then for you to dip. But what what were you looking at exactly for for Google? So I always try to do support resistance and then I'll do my trend lines after. So if you look at that. Okay. And then, and kind of just like everything, I think tech is now coming back into an uptrend. Obviously, we've been uptrending for a very long time in tech in general. I think this could probably go up a little bit more. I like that a little bit more. So yeah, we're. I think we're at a really strong spot for Google to where we're at that 150 level, but we're also at a trend line support. So. It's just one of those things where we have to keep an, an eye on this to see if it potentially can pop. Yeah, like, look at those beautiful rejections. This is at open, just popped off that 150 level, went up, tested the 153. We're kind of no man's land right now from that 153, 46, and then back down to 150. So this is one of those occasions where like, if you're looking to scalp, maybe grab puts here, if you see that volume starting to die out and then sellers starting to kick in, or if you get a break retest, um, and then we could potentially shoot back up higher, right? So that's one way to play this. Another way to play is to wait to, for it to come back down either to the 150 level or, or retest trend line. Um, obviously, you can start looking at your nines and your VWAPs for a shorter time frame uh, plays, but those are stuff to to take into consideration as well. So, okay, so we got those two down. Let's see, Baba. This is interesting. I haven't done. I don't really do this, so it's it's kind of. This is a little easier than uh, when I have to like create a whole fucking deck and teach you guys shit. This is more fun. This is interesting. Has it been, it's been doing this for a while. Look at that. 
you can do that but i like well that's good too i like that just a little bit better just because you get a little bit more touches it's stuck in a channel so we have two channels here check this out so you have this channel right here and then you have Let me clone this. What the hell? Then you have these tops. You can do that, or I think that might be a little bit better. Just get a better range. So I know it's not perfect, but you can kind of see where Baba comes up, sits down, comes up, comes down, comes up, comes down, comes up, comes down, comes up, comes down. And in this case, it couldn't break. There is another level there. I don't want to overkill you guys with levels. You'll see it though, right there, boom. If you notice, like it's it's that level's been used as support and resistance previously. So this this is what you're going to be looking at swing. You mentioned, what did you mention? Uh, Baba put volume is huge looking for a swing. Yeah, I mean, besides news, I could see us coming back down to that 70, 88 level. I would just be careful depending on the type of play that you want to do, just because you know that this has been a repetitive, uh, you know, support level, right? So like, just keep that in mind as we're going into it, just because you have that consistency there. Even if you break this onto the five minute though, I think it kind of gives you a little bit more of data. You do have that room from like a 71, 66, even, even if you do that play and you grab a put all the way down to 71 or maybe even 70, you know, 70, 90s, there is, I think, more than enough room for you to, to grab a put and actually make a play out of that. So even on a shorter time frame, we can be paying attention to that. I didn't really do trends here. So let me see if there, I don't think there is one to be honest. I mean, you can kind of do one here, but I just don't think that's really a trend. It's not really there. I mean, sometimes we have to look, if anything, it's been in a downtrend. Look at that. That's a trend. It's a beautiful trend. probably there yeah if we lose and then by the way uh what's well, who was it swing swing if we lose this like god knows where we can go right like 65s because it's been there before um just low 60s in general or mid 60s i think is definitely feasible but again news right cpi ppi anything of that coming up I added Thursday, Bob put 517. I heard half a million volume earlier from one analyst noted. Thank you. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just got to be careful with, with uh, following. Um, what is it? Just following stuff like that in general. I mean, there's people that love it and they're really good at it. I know Flips does it in short term. Joe does it. Til the reason Tilio and I got into C was actually because he saw a bunch of calls come in. So this is what we're in, right? But um, yeah, that's awesome. All righty. Is Apple a good time to buy stocks? Is Apple a good time to buy stocks? Heavy long-term, one to two years. My goals start buying slowly at 170 down to 155. Do you see a good one? 165. Okay iPhone 4, I will get to you. Let me just grab some of these guys that came in before you because I feel like it's unfair if I just jump to you first, if that's okay. Tesla. Tesla, no matter, I mean, there's there's definitely levels. And in fact, let's do this. Just because to me, Telio is probably one of the best traders I have ever, ever seen, in my opinion. Um, if I wish there was some for the guys that were here early on, if you guys saw Tilio trade and still to the way he does, like probably the best trader 
again, that we most people will ever get to see, talk to. Um, so this is this is Tilio's chart, right? And these are his levels. Um, if you notice, again, probably the same thing that I'm going to end up drawing this downtrend that we have here. But what really matters is his notes, right? And I think that the two things that I kind of want to really talk about is like Tesla's is a number game. So, you know, for 433,000 vehicles only delivered 387. It was a miss the first time they've done a year over year quarterly decline in four years. Uh, but one of the things that Tilio talks about, and I agree with him, because Tesla is bigger than just a car company, right? It's self-driving. It's the software that's inside of it. Um, Elon, right? If Elon does something really good, Tesla goes up, right? So that's stuff that you need to take care of. But for him personally, he's looking for a 183 upside level. And then... I believe the 170 can bring 160, right? And I think for long term, he says he can come back down to 152. So that's something to take into consideration. Obviously, we're sitting at the the 164 level, but kind of just like him, like you can see that downtrend. It's 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 really really obvious that it's there. And I know that there's a lot of people that are bullish on Tesla, but I don't know. Like there's just, I think Tesla is not producing the numbers that it should be doing and it just doesn't have what it takes compared to a lot of these other bigger manufacturing uh, companies right what i would do if i was playing tesla in the interim you have like these really solid levels like the 160s 161s i would wait for one of those like really really solid levels Where's the 175? That 175 level is, is tough. Yeah. Like even kind of low-key channeling within this like section. Again, this, a lot of this was news, right? So I think what we're going to have to pay attention to if you're going for puts is are we going to lose this 160 level, right? Then if we're going calls... I would probably grab calls above 175 on like a confirmation above 175. I know some people even like grabbing them a little bit lower up to you, depending on your trading style. Just Tesla can get really, really volatile very, very fast. So you just got to be careful with that one, right? And it's just news heavy, super, super news heavy. But everything just shows signs of, of decline, unfortunately, which sucks, right? But it is what it is even on a five minute just shows potential decline, but tomorrow we can wake up and Tesla's gapped up $10, right? Like that's just how Tesla is. And that's the, I think that's what, why people get so enticed of trading Tesla in general because of, of how volatile it is. Right. So let's see. Okay. Um, someone brought up Apple. I think I can pull it up. Yeah. So this is his chart. This is iPhone 4's chart. iPhone 4, I cannot read your chart. Um, it's very, very messy. And I'm also colorblind. So these these colors are hard for me because they all look the same. Um, but I'll do it on mine. I, I'll chart I'll chart AMD as well. Let me just get to Apple real quick because I, I feel like if he had uh, the balls to send in his own chart, I think that's very respectable. I wish more people would do that. That's actually really cool. We just got to make that cleaner, man. I can't read it. So we've been consolidating. Well, we ha I can't even call it consolidation because you get these peaks up to... This is news, right? These peaks were news. But we've been holding this one uh, 70 level, 169 level pretty rough. And a lot of this just has to do with like slow, uh, 
slow iPhone sales or just lower iPhone sales across Asia, specifically China. And just let's be honest, Apple just hasn't really been doing anything new. Obviously, they have the Apple Vision Pros, but they haven't done anything crazy, anything new. Right. So his question was, is this a good time to DCA essentially? Like, can we DCA into Apple? I think this is, you can do a starter position here, but I wouldn't go heavy. Um, because even then, like, what's the highest they can go? and go 200. So your risk, I mean, your reward is going to be $30, right? About, like, let's say best, best case scenario is going to be $30. But worst case scenario, and I don't think we'll we'll get down here anytime soon, probably that 150 level, that's just always been very, very strong, right? So that's where you can like add more. And we're just looking at this like from a long-term perspective. We're not looking at this um, from doing swing plays at the moment per se. So can you? Yes. So if you actually look at this... And then if you look at this from like a, a bigger picture, right? We're not we're not looking at this from like Apple kind of just stays within this levels and obviously broke over, came back down, went back up, got these highs right there. So now we, we've just been really consolidating around these levels. And it, it one has to give. We either, probably not what you want to hear in general. Like, obviously, if we could all predict the future, we wouldn't be trading. We would just be making a lot of fucking money. But we know that this 170 level is very, very strong. I think what's really going to dictate it is either we get bad news to bring us down or we get some type of good news and bring us and pop us back up to the 180. So if you have the time, especially if you're doing shares, yes, totally. Would love to do a starter position here. If we're doing swings, I would just be careful because I think the downside risk can be potentially bigger, but we're at a very, very strong support. So even for like the day traders, because I know there's a lot of day traders in here or scalpers, if you take this to a five minute, you can scalp off these levels all day. It's just really, really easy. You're getting like a, I don't know, like a 50 cent move, no more. Yeah. So those are things that I would be paying attention to when it comes to Apple from short term. It's just that 169 level, that 168 level, because we've just been touching it and then bounce back off, right? Consolidate, bounce back off, consolidate, bounce back off. So if we get back in here, we're going to find this really interesting. If we, we get back anywhere near it, you know, touch it, bounce back off, or we'll finally get that breakthrough down, right? So things to keep into consideration as we go into the rest of the week with it being very, very news heavy. So can I chart and, oh, let me get AMD first swing and then we'll, uh, we'll do Neo AMD. This, okay, so AMD too, again, I, I think you guys forget like news is such a big thing um, with the US announcing that it's going to start producing more chips within the United States and not produce as many or not rely as much on Taiwan. Um, you've been seeing these fluctuations within uh, chips in general. So let's look at this from a long term perspective. What I love about AMD is it respects its levels to a fucking T, like very, very, very strong. Um, look, these are old levels. I didn't chart that, by the way. Like I didn't come in here and 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 st and uh, stop this, right? Like, hold up. For Tesla earnings, do you recommend having both sides or do you straddle? No, man. I don't like. I don't play earnings like that. To be completely frank with you. I think people who like try to predict earnings is, is it's fucking stupid unless you know someone inside or like you just know some shit or have like really long-term shares. 
Like that's the only way to really be profitable on on earnings. The people you see that like make a fuck ton of money on earnings, they just got lucky. It's very, very fucking rare that earnings do well i think for the last couple of quarters people just kept getting burnt and burnt and burnt on earnings and then this quarter surprisingly everyone did very well the, does that justify us playing earnings not at all if you like get one out of five right like that doesn't make it any better right so i i would play a run-up into tesla's er and then maybe leave a runner if you made enough money but besides that i, I wouldn't Ivan Four, hell yeah, man. That's good. If 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 you're I know it looks different. My bad for being colorblind. That's that's not your fault, right? So um swing, what were you looking for in AMD in general? Are you trying to play calls? This this 165 level is just money. It's just money. This that. But again, psychological, right? Psychological levels. That 170, probably here. Mm. This is what you do, right? Like you just, you, you mess around with it. You start paying attention to kind of where other candles have closed, where have they opened to kind of start paying attention. Very, very close to touching that. I mean, even if you put it there, it, it's there. And then, yeah. You're going to be range bound here. But chips, chips is like, NVIDIA has been doing bad, right? Yeah, NVIDIA did bad for the past couple of days. I think all chips have just been doing bad. So it might be a sentiment thing where it's just the, the sector is getting, you know, a quick pullback. So that could be it, but we're holding a very, very, very strong support level, as you can clearly see. Right. So are you already in calls? Or are you going to, are you guys, are you guys swinging them already? I want to add a swing at the 165, 163 level for a few months and enjoy semiconductor AI trend. I mean, I just don't know if we're going to get down there again for a while. Right? It's been a minute since we've been down here. So just kind of keep that in mind, like, how realistic is it for AMD to come back down to that 162, 160 level? It hasn't been down there in, well, we can count this, February. So about a month ago. That was the last time it was there. And then we literally got all-time highs. So this is where you kind of have to like, your risk reward is your reward there for, for that 165, 166 level to go back up, or are you going to wait patiently for it to potentially hit back down to this 162 level just for it to reject back up, right? Maybe if you maybe you get it right. Maybe PPI and CPI bring us back down. And then you get your entry, right? If not, AMD has just been a beast and it continues to go up. I don't think it's going to come down anytime soon. Kind of like you mentioned, right? Like that semiconductor, they've just been fire. They've just been very, very hot, hot, hot sector. So how about on a shorter time frame? Maybe that will give us better insights into things. Yeah, look at that. Right. And this is, and I know why, like Mad Flips loves playing AMD just because it's, it, it, it respects the levels so, so well. Like you can catch scalps off AMD so, so easily. Look at that trend. This is a trend line from daily, right? Boom, just touches it and then poof, pops. Beauty, such a beauty. Almost there. Almost got it there. We didn't even get anywhere close to it. So again, if we start curling back down, 
maybe wait for this entry down here and then pop back up for, or we break back above and then we shoot back up for another 175, 177 levels. Those are things to, to kind of keep a look out. All right, let's keep on going. We'll probably do like one or two more. Give you guys all a break. We did Bobo, we did Apple, we did Tesla, we did PayPal, we did Google, AMD, Mara, Apple, Mara, Neo. Any any other ones that you guys want to see? Any anyone have any uh anything else you guys want to see? If not, I'll start I'll start getting on those. Neo and yeah, I'm gonna get on Neo right now. Are you there's I am not gonna chart fucking Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> Rodrigo, what's Coco? I've I've never seen that ticker before. Well, Neil's just a piece of shit. I'm sorry. What were you trying to do with this, dude? <laughs> Is this all time low? I mean, it's not all time lows, but fucking a. I mean, I just, I would just stay away from this, dude. Why? Why are you entertaining this? Did you see something or like? I I. Like, what were you hoping? It's just seeding like trash from a year. Got it. Got it. Um, yeah, this is this this is trash, dude. Literally. Like I know Toasty loves trading Neo for some fucking reason. Don't know why. Fucking loves it. <laughs> um, I would never I think I got in with him one day. No, funny enough, Rodrigo, I actually don't like coconut water unless it comes from a coconut. Like I, I I don't like the coke like the fake coconut flavors. Yeah, dude, just stay away from this shit. Like don't don't don't. I just don't see it. Let's look at Sophie. I'm sorry. I'm I'm not gonna entertain this more. <laughs> hey, Sophie's a little bit better. Aren't you an MMA? Like isn't MMA like fucking deep in this? I'm going to one day, like, Sophie just pops off. I'm just going to be a millionaire and never going to hear from him again. I mean, this was there. We broke, the, they broke that trend line before. So if you look at this. This what something's gonna happen here. This is what you're gonna. You need to pay attention to this. Uh, whoever it was that was asking for Sophie, swing. Yeah, I mean, I think you're you're chilling, dude. Why didn't you get shares? Why'd you get a leap? Isn't it more beneficial to just get a shares? That way you're not getting theta against you. I uh, depending on if you're in profit or not. I would get out of those leaps and just buy shares if you have the equity, right? If the equity is there, I, I can't imagine how much a, a Sophie leap must cost. Like it's it's probably the same, if not more than, uh, uh you know, seven hundred dollars, seven hundred forty dollars. So uh, keep that in mind, because I I'd rather just have the shares. And I think if I'm correct, MMA has shares. He doesn't have options, so. Keep that in consideration. Mara. Immediately. Whoa. And then 
Mara, because obviously I, I I pay attention to what Grizz is doing and and the stuff that he does in Mara. Obviously, we know Mara's is closely attached to whatever Bitcoin is doing. So I'm sure that's not new news to you guys. But just in general, like always remember some of these things. Yeah, so pay attention to these retests down here. But I want to say there's a downtrend here. I'm just trying to find it. I, just, I Maybe it's just forming. I also don't want to push something that's not there. This is going to be huge. This, whatever happens here, is going to be like the next big thing about all of this. Right? Who Who's playing Mara? Are, are, what are you guys trying to do with Mara? Are you guys like doing really long-term stuff with it? Or is it like a short-term play? Is Grizzlies in it? Is that why you guys are asking me? Let me go make sure. I don't want to talk shit about something. Yet. No, he's not in it. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> he is in it, or you guys are long term. How do you see the volume option activity, like down here, or even on a on a more four nineteen twenty TC? That's cutting it close, guys. Well, today is the seventh. That's cutting it close. You guys need a pop soon. Well, yeah, because we just had one, two, three, four, five days of just down, right? This, you got an inverted hammer here. Potentially pop off this and get back up. When did you guys get in? Well, when when did you guys get in? I think it was like Friday, Thursday? You guys, oh, you're fine then. Okay, I thought I thought you guys were worse off, and I think you guys got in a long time ago or something. No, you guys have time. I think. Look, and and that's the beauty of it. You guys are catching this at, uh, on a downtrend, right? So, you guys aren't going to be too down. Hopefully, tomorrow we get a nice pop back up and start getting you guys back into profit. Eat, and then he sees it. You know, you have to think about it like. Grizz is also looking at it from a BTC uh, perspective, right? Exactly. So, like, he's not even just only looking at it from a, a, a chart perspective, like we're looking at it right now. He's looking at it probably. It's like, hey, if BTC pops, this pops. Let's let's you know, let's take that risk. The risk is there. So, um, that's probably what he's doing. Um, but if you notice, like, I just put that there. We essentially damn near hit it day and then come back down. So. Hopefully you guys get your pop and you guys get out of this this right here. I, I'm going to check on this for tomorrow on you guys. Uh, I'll be excited to see what you guys, what happens. See, shares is where it's at, Miguel. Good job. How do I see volume activity? Sanjay, so it, it depends. So like for trading view, we have it down here. If you go into TOS, um, you can actually get like, very very linear of it in the sense that it will literally tell you how much volume um well it actually says it right here too like if you go over a candle it'll tell you how much volume there is for that day and then if you go into like a five minute it will literally tell you the volume for each single candle right so it's just a volume ba basic volume um indicator all right one more i'm gonna get the hell out of here Give me a good one. Option volume? That is option volume. Oh, you're you're talking about like um like uh call like calls and, and yeah. Um you're gonna have to go look up a flow service. So uh unusual whales, cheddar flow. Those are the only two things one I can think of right now. 
I did chart Tesla iPhone. Um, personally, though, like unless you know what you're doing, yeah. See, San, like Sanjay, I'm sorry. Like if you're asking what a flow service is, you're not ready for a flow service. You need to learn the basics of charting before you even care about stuff like that. Because like that, and that's the shit that like irks me sometimes with trading. Like people want like all the fancy indicators. Um, yeah, you're going to advanced stuff essentially. Like you're, you're going too fast. Learn the basics, learn what we're doing now, the charting stuff. Then once you get this, right? Like once you learn this stuff and um, it was, uh, uh, I'll pull it up, I'll pull it up, don't worry. So like once you learn your levels and stuff, Sanjay, then you're like, okay, we're looking at that 160 level. I have a feeling that Tesla might rebound off of that. Let's go look at flow. Oh, flow is confirming. We have buyers stepping in. I am, that's another sense of why I want to jump into it. And then iPhone in general, um, that 160 level is pretty strong. I also talked about Tilio's um, guidance on, or what his perspective is uh, on it as well. And then kind of just, potentially playing the rebound off that 160 back up um, and then just being careful around that 175 level because it, it can get pretty nasty. Or if we finally get a a breach retest, then you can potentially grab calls up there as well. So risk reward, right? You just got to pay attention to that. All right, one more and then we'll get the hell out of here. Let's see. Let's see. We already did Mara. Tesla, he's... Uh, I have no idea what he's his iPhone for. Sorry. Any any last any last ones? I didn't I didn't see any like MDB. What's MDB, Blake? Oh, MongoDB. I think kind of like Mongo, Snow, all of these SaaS companies, and if you see it right here, right? They they've just been in downtrends this whole fucking time. If I want to, I'm curious, is Snow finally picking back up? Yeah, so they're starting to come out of that downtrend. No, not dog. What's the D dog? There it is. Well, that one's just been consolidating. God. Okay. But like any of the ones that did bad, they're finally starting to come out of um out of that downtrend. So I think these are good spots to pick them up just based on what I'm seeing like really quickly. It's expensive though. God. I wish Octa stock was was this high. Poor Octa stock, man. Where are you? I don't even know where to, oh, here you are. Back up the 101 levels. But uh, yeah, see, coming down, then we're getting signs that we're going to start reversing soon, right? So yeah, nice catch. I'll end with Costco. I think Costco is a good one. I was just talking to Rev about this. We were looking at Costco. He was looking at Costco, actually. That's the only thing that kind of worries me. So if we can break back up above that trend line, that would be beautiful. Like right away, right? Like that's the first thing I saw. from long-term perspective we were in an uptrend for like a really really long time obviously broke it do you see that we broke it and then came down so get above this trend line and then eventually get back up above this one if possible if not wait for a retest back down here from a support perspective 
we're holding that. Multiple touches, multiple bodies, multiple candles. Where are we on the top? Probably there, boom. So 713 back up to 740. I'll take this risk right here. If we can get above this, that's a that, that might be a nice potential play. Is that where you're kind of looking for? Um, swing. If not, all righty, guys, that's it for me. I'll keep a lookout on these ones. I'm really excited to kind of see what they're tomorrow. Remember, a lot of news, CPI, PPI. We got finance reporting on Friday, and then we have uh, travel. So thank you, guys. Catch you tomorrow. Bye.